In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the tax basis of accounting. You know, GAAP requires some very complicated accounting like lease accounting, and sometimes CPAs or accountants desire a simpler form of accounting, and that alternative many times is the tax basis of accounting. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use tax basis accounting. I'm going to show you an example statement using the tax basis of accounting. So when we're done, you'll have a pretty good understanding. So first, uh, let's define what the tax basis of accounting is. Uh, if you prepare a tax return like an 1120, you've already prepared the balance sheet and income statement for that return. Or if you prepared a 990, nonprofit uh, tax return, you've done the same. So what you can do is take those numbers uh, just as they are on those tax returns and use those in uh, a separate report that you issue as a CPA or, or as an accountant. So why do people choose to do this? Well, it's just a simpler form of accounting. Think about it. If you've already done the 1120 tax return or the 990 return, you've already got a balance sheet and an income statement on a tax basis, why not just use those numbers rather than converting to generally accepted accounting principles or what we call GAAP? That conversion from tax to GAAP takes time, and many times your clients really don't care. Uh, they're happy to have the tax basis of accounting, and I find that most banks are satisfied with that as well. Do take a look at any loan agreements to make sure that GAAP is not required. If it is, you'll have to use that basis of accounting. But if not, this tax basis is a great alternative. So what does the tax basis of accounting look like in a set of financial statements? I'm going to take you to a sample set of statements so you can see. So here's a set of financial statements using the tax basis of accounting. The first thing I want you to notice is the title. Uh, we say balance sheet tax basis. Now some people say statement of assets, liabilities, and equity dash tax basis. Either one is fine. And then as you look at the balance sheet, you'll see it almost looks like a gap set of statements. We've got cash, receivables, inventory, PP&E, uh, and then a total down at the bottom. But when you use the tax basis of accounting, for instance, on the accounts receivables, you want to make sure this number matches what is on the tax return. And that's part of the beauty of using the tax basis of accounting is you're not having to convert any numbers. So look at the number, say, for accounts receivable on the tax return, and that's what appears in this financial statement. The same is true of plant, plant property and equipment. Look at the return and see what those numbers are. Now, you will have depreciation in a tax basis of accounting, but you're using tax basis depreciation. As you already know, if you're uh, using tax basis accounting, you might do a Section 179 and fully depreciate a very expensive asset in one year. So this is quite different than GAAP, which would use straight-line depreciation. So there are differences between GAAP and tax basis. You want to be aware of those. If you have disclosures in the tax basis financial statements, you would need to disclose those significant differences between GAAP and the tax basis. So here's the balance sheet. I'm not really going to make any comments here. I just want you to see what it looks like. And, and notice in this example, I'm using preparation standards. So that's why I've got the language down here. This is in accordance with ARC 70. You can see my video about preparation standards as you click above. And then here's the statement of operations and members equity tax basis. So remember, you need to call it a tax basis on each statement. 
And then you're going to see revenues, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and that depreciation number, I, I repeat myself, but this is going to be the depreciation from the tax return, which might be accelerated. One other thing I want you to notice as we scroll down, uh, that's the last uh, statement in uh, these tax basis financial statements. In other words, there's not uh, a cash flow statement. So if you have a special purpose framework such as the tax basis, you're not required to prepare a cash flow statement. Now I'll just show you quickly the accountant's disclaimer. And again, I'm using ARC 70 in the SARS to issue this financial statement. This is called preparation of financial statements. This is different from a compilation, which is uh, ARC 80. So this is ARC 70, the preparation of financial statements. But notice the table of contents. The only thing we've got here is, is the disclaimer, the balance sheet, and the statement of operations and members' equity. There's no cash flow statement. And again, we're taking these numbers straight from the tax return. We're not making any conversions like we would for GAAP, so this is saving time. What's the quickest way to issue financial statements? <laughs> I think you can see that this is probably the easiest way to do so. You've done the tax return, you have a balance sheet, you have an income statement, you pull those numbers from the tax return, you put it in a set of financial statements like this. Uh, if you're a CPA and you're issuing these statements and you've been engaged to prepare the financial statements, then consider using ARC 70 preparation of financial statements. Issue the disclaimer and you're off to the races. Uh, now there's some other considerations in preparation engagements. I'm not getting into those in this video. But uh, just be aware that you have this option to issue uh, tax basis financial statements. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks and bye now.